All right, so let's uh, recall from our last video um, on velocity that our average speed, which remember speed and velocity are kind of the same thing. The only difference between speed and velocity is velocity has um, speed and direction where speed is just speed. Okay, so our average speed equals the distance, the total distance, divided by the total time. Okay, total distance divided by the total time. And this average speed, it's, it's not a vector, it's a scalar, because it's just a number. For example, 60 miles per one hour. Just a number. Uh, velocity, on the other hand, is also the total distance divided by the total time. But it also has direction. So uh, for example, uh, 60 miles per hour north, or 60 miles per hour forward, backward, towards the right. Those are all directions. So velocity is a vector. Okay. So with that, we're going to head off into a new concept. And our new concept here is acceleration. Okay. Acceleration, this too is also a vector. Okay. It has size and direction. And so what acceleration is, acceleration is the rate, it's the rate at which an object changes velocity. Okay, now I'm going to clear up a misconception right now. A lot of times when people um, think of the word acceleration, they think an object is speeding up, which is typically true for the most part, but it's also, it can mean um, when an object is accelerating, it's slowing down. Because there's two types of acceleration. There's positive acceleration, but then there's also negative acceleration. Okay, so when somebody says, you know, that car is accelerating, don't automatically assume that they are speeding up. They also can be slowing down. It's also important to remember that just because an object is going fast doesn't mean it's accelerating. So, um, or just because it's going slow doesn't mean it's accelerating. Acceleration is the rate at which an object is changing its velocity. So it's speed and or direction is changing. That, when speed changes, velocity changes. When your speed stays the same and your direction changes, your velocity changes. So like I said, there's two types of acceleration. There's positive acceleration and there's negative acceleration. So speed is generally going up during positive acceleration. Okay, and speed is generally decreasing during negative acceleration, okay? So you got this positive acceleration, you're speeding up, negative acceleration, you're slowing down, okay? Now let's talk about um, uh, the two, so there's two types, positive and negative, but then there's kind of like two subtypes there is um, constant acceleration 
and changing. Now, constant acceleration is going to mean that you are constantly changing your velocity at the same rate. And if you were to graph something like that, um, here you would have your wonderful xy. Um, remember, it's the rate at which velocity changes. Okay, so we're going to have, um, um, let's see, if we were to have a constant changing um, or acceleration, excuse me, the graph would look something like this. It would be very linear. Okay, it would be very linear because our acceleration is changing at the same rate over time. Okay, now if we were to have a changing where our acceleration changed, then it would look something more like this. It's not the same. Yeah, that's not great because that starts to go back. It's not the same at all, okay? It's nonlinear. Okay? All right, so let me just clear this screen here. Let's go ahead and start with the formula for acceleration. So acceleration okay, equals the change in time, or excuse me, the change in velocity divided by the change in time. And we can abbreviate this in a much more simplified way. Equals delta V, and the delta symbol means change in. Okay. Delta V divided by delta T, change in time. Acceleration, delta V divided by delta T. So we can furthermore uh, extend our formula for acceleration. Like we said, acceleration, which is abbreviated A with a line, equals delta V divided by delta T. Now I'm going to take this a little further. Um, it equals the final, and what uh, change in velocity means, it means... Um, the final velocity minus the object's initial velocity, okay, divided by the final time minus the initial time, okay. And so now using this formula right here, acceleration equals the change in velocity divided by the change in time. We're going to spend some time working through some practice problems. Okay, so, whoops, let's uh, erase here. Um, let's do a couple of practice problems using this formula here. So I'm going to clear my screen, and we're going to go ahead and do number one, okay? I'll go ahead and paste this in here for you. Um, a little better to just use um, copy and paste rather than you trying to interpret my handwriting. So a roller coaster, um, a roller coaster car rapidly picks up speed as it rolls down a slope. As it starts down the slope, its speed is four meters per second. But three seconds later, at the bottom of the slope, its speed is 22 meters per second. What is its average acceleration. So we're calculating average acceleration equals the change in velocity divided by the change in time. Go ahead and spend a couple minutes uh, trying to calculate that and be ready to discuss that in class tomorrow. And I will give you a couple more practice problems here in just a moment. Okay, continuing on, let's do number two is a practice problem here. We'll discuss these tomorrow in class. So number two, 
A ball is dropped from the top of a building. After two seconds, its velocity is measured to be 19.6 meters per second. Calculate the acceleration for the dropped ball. So again, calculating the acceleration. Okay. And our final number three practice problem tonight is going to be a runner covers um, the last straight, straight stretch of a race in four seconds. During that time, he speeds up from five meters per second to nine meters per second. What is the runner's acceleration in this part of the race? I'm going to highlight this right here. This part of the race. It's not the entire race. It's just that one section. Okay. So again, we're still calculating acceleration for this one. So acceleration equals change in V over change in T. Okay. Spend some time calculating these three and be ready to go over them tomorrow in class. Again, complete sentences. Okay, now that we've had an opportunity to work out those problems, let's go ahead and go over them together. So here's the first one. Uh, a roller coaster, number one. Roller coaster rapidly picks up speed as it rolls down a slope. Uh, as it starts down the slope, its speed is 4 meters per second, but 3 seconds later, at the bottom of the slope, it is 22 meters per second. What's its average, accel average acceleration? Remember, acceleration equals the change in velocity over the change in time. Okay? So the change in velocity is the velocity final minus the velocity initial divided by the time final minus the time initial. Okay, so let's fill in these numbers. The velocity final says right here, 22 meters per second. That's at the end. So 22 meters per second minus the velocity initial. The initial velocity <clears throat> stated was 4 meters per second. That's 4 meters per second. Okay, all divided by Time final minus time initial. Time final says three seconds later. Three seconds later, the bottom of the slope, it was 22. So that's the final. Three seconds minus the time initial. Now, sometimes the time initial is an actual number. In this case, um, it's not um, a number, a positive number, or a negative number in this case. In this case, it's zero because it's not having you measure acceleration, um, you know, in, in segments. Right now, it's having you measure acceleration from the start, and from the start, time is usually zero. So in this case, it's three seconds minus zero seconds, which is the same thing as three. So when we work all that out, we get 18, 22 minus 4, meters per second divided by three seconds minus zero seconds is three seconds. Now you do have to make sure, change color here to highlight this, you do have to make sure that this time measurement seconds is the same as this one. If you're measuring in meters per hour and this is in seconds, it won't work. You'll need to convert this into hours. Got to make sure that these two times are the same. Okay, so we have 18 meters per second divided by 3 meters per second equals 18 divided by 3 is 6 meters per second, okay, per 1 second. And we don't need that 1 there, so we've got 6 meters per second per second. But how we write acceleration is usually in meters per second squared. So 6 meters per second squared. Okay. So this would be your final answer for that. 6 meters per second squared Okay, is how fast that uh, is the average acceleration of that uh, roller coaster. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and work through number two, okay? In this case was a ball was dropped from a top, top of a building, okay? After two seconds, its velocity was measured to be 19.6 meters per second. Calculate the 
acceleration. So it's asking for acceleration. Okay. So acceleration equals change in velocity over the change in time. Okay. I'm going to write out a couple of things here. Let's first write out what is our um, initial time. Okay. Our initial time. Time initial equals. There's no telling you that it, you know, it's been running for five seconds and then we're calculating anything. Nothing like that. Okay. Strictly time initial is zero seconds. Doesn't give you anything. Time final. Okay, is after two seconds. So two seconds. Okay. Velocity initial, does it it doesn't in the problem tell you anywhere where velocity is starting at five meters per second. N none of that. So we have to assume that the velocity initial is zero meters per second. And I chose meters per second here because our velocity final is right here, 19.6 meters per second. And we want to keep the same units. Okay, now we can just plug these into our formula. Remember, um, change in V is VF minus VI divided by time. Time F minus time I, okay. Velocity final, 19.6 meters per second, minus velocity initial, which is zero meters per second, divided by time final, which is two seconds, minus zero seconds. So we saw that coming along. We don't even have to do these math problems here. We know that it's 19.6 meters per second, divided by two seconds. Okay? And then when you plug that into your calculator, you're going to get um, 9.8 meters per second per second or 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay? And the reason it there it's it Excuse me. There is a reason that it's 9.8 meters per second. And we're going to get to this later, but it comes to this right here. A ball is dropped. So when we have something that's dropped, we have a wonderful um, phenomena here on Earth called gravity. Okay, and gravity is a force, and we're going to talk about that later. And 9.8 meters per second squared does relate to gravity, but we'll, like I said, we'll talk about that later. All right, let's go ahead and clear this screen, and let's walk through the third problem now. And the third problem, okay, was a runner covers the last straight, straight stretch of a race in four seconds. During that time, he speeds up from five meters per second to nine meters per second. What is the runner's acceleration in this part of the race? Same thing. Final velocity minus initial velocity divided by the final time minus initial time. Well, we only have one time, so we're going to assume that the time... Uh, Veloc Let's just start with velocity initial. Velocity initial, he's starting at 5 meters per second. So that is 5 meters per second. Velocity final is 9 meters per second. Time initial doesn't say any time initial, so we're going to assume it's 0. 0 seconds. Time final is uh, 4 seconds. Okay, so plug them into our thing here. We got 9 meters per second minus 5 meters per second divided by 4 seconds minus 0 seconds. Okay, and we're going to do that. 9 minus 5 is 4 meters per second, and 4 minus 0 is 4, 4 seconds. Okay. And we know that 4 divided by 4 is 1, so we're going to get our 
uh, at runner's acceleration for this part is one meter per second per second or one meter per second squared. Okay, just like that. Okay.